joining from Fighting for My Life series from the Tabernacle of David Prophetic Dance Center in Jerusalem. I cannot admonish you enough today, my friend, to take excellent care of yourself. You know, no matter what our age is, we can suffer from peer pressure. It is so critically important to respect ourselves. You know, don't compare yourself to anybody else. You're one of a kind. God intentionally made you with your own unique one of a kind fingerprints. So it's taken me about two months to begin to feel lighter and better after everything that we've suffered in this land. Um, and a dear friend of mine last night was sharing some things and just hearing them was very difficult for me it, it had to do with all that we've been through here and so the lesson that comes out of this is and first of all this is someone I deeply love and so I expressed that I care so deeply for them and I'm praying for them, but it's not something that I can continue to talk about and God has made it very clear because of all that was involved. And they completely understood and they apologized uh, if they, you know, in their hurt did not um, see that maybe it wasn't good for me. But, you know, there's something to be learned in everything. We don't have to be afraid to feel. And I did get a revelation uh, in that about some things that have happened. So hallelujah to that. But, you know, you're the only you. And you don't even have to understand why you're uncomfortable with any given situation. The fact that you're uncomfortable is enough for you to not proceed forward. I, I can think of many years ago... Uh, I was looking at an apartment in Long Beach, Long Island, and it was exactly where I wanted it to be on the bay, between the bay and the ocean. But I, I just had this uncomfortable feeling in my gut. Well, that means something isn't right. And I was a believer as well, so I can refer to, I can trust the Holy Spirit. So I didn't have to know why I wasn't uncomfortable in order to respect myself and respect Holy Spirit's guiding within me. It's enough to know you're not comfortable. We must learn how, you know, I can say growing up as a woman and growing up with a lot of manners, um, even if someone does you wrong, even if a man does you wrong in the way he speaks or whatever, you know, there's that voice of, well, you're supposed to treat everybody nicely and kindly, but there are times, no, you need to put your foot down and you need to be firm. This is very important. It's called being assertive. And assertive and aggressiveness are not the same things. Assertion and aggressive, absolutely not. They are not the same things. To be assertive is necessary. To be aggressive is not. Um, I'm not talking about defending yourself or, you know, protecting yourself. I'm not speaking about that. But... As women, you know, Israeli women don't have this problem, and I admire them. They're, they don't have that those tapes going on. They just say what they need to say, and they move on. It's not an oppressed... Israelis are not an oppre oppressed people. They are not, and I admire that. We need to learn how to speak directly. We need to learn how to be firm when we need to be firm. There's a scripture that says to be as harmless as a dove and as wise as a serpent, and to, to be able to know what is required in any given moment. We need to break off. I'm telling you, I'm going to say this very extreme statement, and some of you women out there will understand. The good little girl was crucified on Messiah's cross. The good little girl. The properly behaved good little girl that only does the things that are right. A lot of women grew up this way, I can say, at least in New York. We don't do that. Even if someone treats you wrongly, well, it's not right to be, to be what we may say is rude. It's not rude. It's necessary. Some things that we need to say. So, you know, Israel, as I always say, is the greatest place to get healed of everything. And for me, specifically, Jerusalem. We have to be firm. We have to be firm with our boundaries. And boy, have I had opportunity in this land the last 14 years to be firm. I've had to make painstaking decisions, and even over the last three and a half years, because I'm going into my 
fourth year here in this home and dance center painful it's not like one decision felt good and the other one didn't both felt bad but there was only right one right decision and i grew through making that healthy decision i grew you see it's decision by decision it's what are your choices when you make the healthy choice a healthy decision you become emotionally healthier if you continue to make unhealthy choices for your life you remain emotionally unhealthy and I've often referred to, I cannot stand this expression, mature believer. It makes me want be ill. Because what does that mean? You know the word of God, but you have no emotional process. It's such a crazy expression. I will never use that expression. Because it doesn't make any sense. Good health is body, mind, soul, and spirit. All of these things need to be healthy. Good health is all of these things. I'm not just spirit because I'm born anew, born of the spirit. I live in a body and my body needs to be healthy. And I believe that when I, my body is not healthy, it's an indicator that something is not right in my heart. Something needs to be addressed. Something is not solved or resolved and it needs to be. So the good news is, is when you have a physical affliction, go to your heart. When you heal your heart, when you bring your heart before God and you ask him to come in and do what only he can do to heal you at the root, your body will get better. That's the good news. Absolutely. Stand strong for yourself. Respect yourself, child of God. This is really important. Do not let people dishonor you. I don't care who they are. Because you know, when you dishonor yourself or you allow, allow people to dishonor you, you're dishonoring God. God deserves to be respected and honored. And if you are in Messiah in God, then you should be respected and respected and honored as his child. Yes, we know the word of God says it will be spat upon and will be persecuted for being identified with Messiah Yeshua. And the word says, consider yourself blessed because the spirit of the living God resides and sits upon your shoulder. I'm talking about relationships. You know, people will do what people do. But don't find yourself in relationships, ongoing interactions with people who are abusive. I don't mean street ministry. I don't mean ministry. I mean relationships. Because, you know, really, what are you saying about yourself? And I'll share something very candidly. Many years ago, uh, I was in a, a very unhealthy relationship. And very complicated. And a friend of mine who loves me said to me, I fear that you're in this relationship because you don't think you're worth anything better. You don't, you know, you don't think you're worth anything. And it, it hurt me to hear that. But of course she was right. What was I doing in this relationship that was horrible for me, for my life? You know, we can't kick ourselves. We bring these things to the Lord. How did that happen? Blah, 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 blah. And we need to move on. And, and our past is under the blood. Yeshua has forgiven us. He wants us to forgive ourselves. We can't do anything about the past. There's always lessons to be learned, right? God can bring good out of any bad things. And when we're in Messiah Yeshua, everything is redemptive. All things work together for good to those who love Messiah Yeshua and are called according to his purpose. Take good care of yourself. Be an excellent steward of your one-of-a-kind life. No matter what your age, there can be peer pressure. Resist it. I always quote the scripture, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. I'm just going to go on to another topic about artistic uh, creative expression, which God has given us these gifts. Don't ever compromise your creative gift and your art for anyone we don't live to please man if man is pleased and delights in what we're doing while we're doing it for god that's great but we don't choose man over god never we choose god we were created for him hallelujah hide yourself in him don't hide behind him. And what I mean by that is people are running up and, day up and down all day long for Yeshua. 
never beginning an emotional process, never dealing with their feelings or emotions. They're just, I love Yeshua, I love Yeshua. Of course we love Yeshua. And Yeshua wants us to get our hearts healed. And meeting Yeshua is the beginning of the healing process. Friend, if you don't have an emotional process, if you are not connected to your heart of hearts where Yeshua's spirit lives, I want to admonish you to begin a heart connection today. You know, other people have let us down. People will let us down because they're fallen man. We are full of flaws. The only perfect one is God. We can look to him for everything that we need. But we are flawed. But people won't, will never be able to be there for you emotionally if they don't begin an emotional process. And you'll never be able to be there for anyone emotionally. You'll never be able to empathize with true compassion if you are not in an emotional process. Life is a learning curve, true, but let's get on the curve. Fourth time, take care of yourself. Respect yourself. If you're in an abusive relationship, stop it. You've got to make a change. You've got to do something. Because you're not a victim. If you're an adult, you have your own mind. You have your own volition. You're not a victim. There's help out there. Yes, we're victims as helpless children who can't take care of ourselves. But if you're a grown adult and you're in a, in a victim cycle, the only way out of it is to choose that you want to get out of it. And no one can help you. And don't pull people into the pit with you. That's not God's will. It is not God's will for you or I to pull anybody into the bottomless pit. And we have to be careful that we are not pulled in. People, There are people who are in a victim cycle who want to suck the living daylights out of you. And child of God, you need to discern what's going on in the spiritual realm and say, no, no, I'm not God. I can point you to God. The only hope that I have, the light you see in my life, is the Lord Yeshua. I don't take any credit. What do I mean by that? Yeah, if I bring forth something in the Lord, sure, I can say thank you, hallelujah. God gave me the gift and I'm partnering with him. Don't be fa a false, pious adult and say, oh, it was all God. It wasn't all God. If you made beautiful music or beautiful dance or beautiful art, preaching, teaching, whatever you do, partnering with the Lord, you don't have to say, oh, it was all God, had nothing to do with me. No, God couldn't have done it if you didn't say yes and partner with him and physically bring it forth. You know, Yeshua is seated at the right hand of God, but his spirit lives and breathes within us and empowers us. Yeshua isn't physically here. We don't see him physically. We're his hands and his feet on this earth, on this planet. We are to bring forth the love of God through our art here, through our teaching, through our preaching, through all the various and wonderful gifts that he's bestowed upon each one of us. Get out of the victim cycle. Don't pull other people into that dark, bottomless pit. That is not God's will. And so I ran into somebody on the street the other day. And this person wanted to engage me. Um, and I, after a while, I began to talk a little bit about the war. And I immediately, I can, I can physiologically feel a change in my body when I am not supposed to be talking about something that is bad for me. I go, nope, it just hurt. And I respect that. But I wish I had not even gone there. So we live and we learn, don't we? So we love, we have to respect if we can't talk about certain things because God says it's under the blood, move on. And we can lovingly say it's under the blood or God has told me not to talk about it. And if people don't respect that, move on. Because respect is the most important thing to make a relationship work. If there is no respect, move on. Respect is key. Absolutely. I used to pretend I had a fake microphone and put it in front of my dad on their anniversary and say, congratulations. You know, I'd say, so tell us, tell us viewing audience what makes a marriage work. First thing my dad would say is respect. You know, respect. You got to have respect. Absolutely. You have to have love too, of course. Respect is key in any relationship. There just can't be a friendship or relationship without it. So I'm going to close there. 
guard your heart for out of it springs the issues of life and our choices result in consequences so before you make major life decisions really be very prayerful and don't move ahead without the green light from God little checks become big checks don't ignore the little nudgings from God don't ignore it you can trust the Spirit of God you can put your hand on the crown of your head where the Spirit of the Lord just shoots and you can put your hand on your crown of your head and just say my God speaks to me and I hear him affirm that for yourself for your life God bless you from his holy city Yerushalayim